All right. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen here. All right. Well, again, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Larry Dewey. I'm filling in today uh, because um, a lot of people are at KubeCon right now. And so you'll have to bear with me. Um, still fairly new to the community, just kind of getting my bearings, but uh, I work for AMD and uh, just uh, work on a lot of the security features of the enterprise Epic chip. Um, but before we start jumping into, you know, kind of the main agenda notes and, and open floor and stuff like that. Um, I figured I would just uh, see if there's anyone new in the meeting today um, and if they'd like to introduce themselves. All right, I will take that as a no. Um, okay. Uh, well, I went through and tried to do a little of um, a little bit of preparation work uh, going through um, some of the things that are there. I don't see anything in the agenda or notes. Does anyone have anything in particular that they'd like to talk about before we uh, jump into uh, the other other points of discussion? Okay, keeping that easy for me. I uh, appreciate it. Um, all right, well, maybe what we'll do is we'll just uh, do a couple of quick mailing list things. I might change the order here just to get some updates from the community. Um, uh, in the agenda, there is a mailing list review link there. Um, and I, I went ahead and looked through for the past week to see if there's anything in particular to take note of. Um, and I noticed kind of two main things. Um, there is right now some ongoing issues in the CI, uh, just to be aware of. So if you see things kind of being slow or, or sluggish, there are some things that they're trying to resolve there. There's currently an issue. Um, I'll go ahead and pull that up real quick. It's currently an issue right now with hey, the... Doing? Yeah, doing well. How are you doing, Jed? Uh, uh, this is Brian, sorry. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. just... just... <laughs> I'll give an update on this email as well, on the thread sure. as well itself, but just for everyone on the call. So the issue with the 124 lanes was resolved on Friday evening late. Um, and then we had the investigations, the SRIV one. It was, a, it was actually turned out to be an issue with Prow, where Prow was not applying the correct labels to the SRIV pods, which led to a clash because without the labels, the anti-affinity wasn't working correctly. So those pods were competing for hardware there. So that was causing issues there. And it was probably causing issues to the VGPU lanes as well. So we've reverted Prow back to state where it is now applying the correct labels. Um, we've located the issue in test infra and we're hopefully gonna post a fix for that. Um, but at the moment that issue has kind of been resolved. It's just we have a big backlog of jobs now at the moment. So there's very high load on the workloads cluster. So things will be a bit slower, but PRs are getting merged. So things are kind of operating again, but it's just we're under a bit of load, that's all. Yeah. Perfect, thank you for the update. That's really great news. I'm glad that everything uh, has been sorted out. So yeah, we'll just uh, kind of bear with it and, until it gets all flushed and that queue is just not as backed up, but that's, that's great news. Glad to, to hear that that's uh, working out now. Um, uh, aside from that, the only other thing that is to, to take note of is that there are some bots that are being retired um, that are tied to the Docker account. And so um, there's some more information about that um, on the link that's just kind of underneath there. But uh, again, there's just a couple of different uh, bots that were tied to the Docker account and organization that are being retired by November 12th. Um, again, uh, people have gone through and done some, some looking, doesn't look like anyone's actually using these. But if for any reason you are aware of any um, any of these that you have seen being used, just make sure that um, these get cleaned up from your, your different use cases. Hello. Uh, hey, this is Stu. Um, uh, in addition to this one, I had also noticed that there was a, I think it was called Cubert uh, Devel or Cubert Storage Devel was also another bot. Has anybody heard of that one? I don't think it's being used either, but. Okay, let me. Let me put that on here though, just to make sure we keep track of that one. And then I'll 
follow up. Hubert Storage Devel. Yes, I'm double checking the wording real quick. Okay. Perfect. Yes, I'm totally. It was Qvert Devel Storage. I will paste it in the chat. All right, let me grab that real quick. That is chat. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. So we'll go ahead and take a note on that one then. Um, and uh, we just need to see, uh, is this one being removed as well? Yes, I would like to remove that one. All right, perfect. Cool. So those are kind of the, the main mailing list things. If there's anything else anyone is aware of, um, I, again, I didn't see anything else on the, the main mailing list. Um, but uh, a great place to keep uh, keep track of what's going on in the community and uh, keep on top of what's happening. Um, there was another one. I don't know if anyone who attends this also goes to SIG scale, but that has been canceled this week due to KubeCon as well. So um, if you go to that, just be aware that that has been, has been canceled for this week. All right. Um, that, I'm gonna move this little thing out of the way. All right. Um, great. Well, then, with that, uh, looks like we got something on the open floor from Miguel. Uh, do you want to go ahead and uh, ask your question? Uh, yeah, I just uh, was wondering, like, if, can you guys hear me? That's yeah, we can hear you. Make. Okay, cool. Uh, I was wondering, uh, what's the state of the upcoming 1.25 uh, lanes? Like I know we had some issues with the networking tests in there, which I had fixed earlier this week. So this week, so I was just wondering uh, when the the one dot twenty five lanes will become a voting uh, CI uh, lane. I guess that Daniel or Brian should have more info about this. Yeah, here. Hey, Miguel, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, so um, we had issues, as you said, with the network lane and the storage lane. Those issues have been resolved. So there's a couple of tests that were failing there on the periodics. Um, those have been resolved, but we, I think we still have some ongoing issues in the SIG compute lane. And I think there's a, a PR going to fix that. I just need to try and do out the PR. Um, I can add it to the notes after this. Um, so once that's resolved, I think the rest of the lanes are looking okay. So I think we should be ready to introduce it once that SIG compute, once those SIG, SIG compute tests are, are fixed. Okay, perfect. Thanks for the update. May I chime, up, chime in a little bit? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, great. I just had some audio issues. I just wanted to chime in directly. I'm sorry for that. So. Um, in general, there is automation that should make the uh, the lanes uh, required automatically. What it does, it, it creates a PR that will change the require status. Or let me, sorry, I let me rephrase that. Um, at first, it tries to make them always run, and in the next stage, it tries to make them required. So normally, this should um, happen every other month. So what you should be seeing at the beginning of next month somehow that there should be a PR created that actually will change the always run from false to um, yeah just just so that everyone knows that we have automation in place and how it works in general. Does that make sense or? Well, I was totally unaware uh, that existed. So at least uh, I'm less ignorant now. So thanks for the info. It's fine. I can I can just drop a link on. Uh, I I always know that that people might not be aware of some automation that exists. I'm just going to drop a link to the automation description, which is very sparse, of course. But um, at least that might help 
everyone to understand what is there. I'm just going to add something to the meeting minutes. Well, that would be appreciated. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Great discussion points. Anything else that anyone would like to add? All right. All right, great. Anything else that anyone would like to talk about on the open floor? Okay. Uh, with that, um, there were, uh, there's only one PR that I was able to kind of pull up that seemed like it needed um, direct attention. Um, and I, again, I'm not super familiar with this. This particular PR looks like it's fairly new, uh, but there just hasn't been any, any motion on it, uh, at this point. And it's just uh, talking about custom images for core components. And uh, looks like the, just, just waiting for some Oh, it looks like we got some CC on there uh, at this point now. Um, uh, but anyway, uh, I guess this is it's got some some traction now. Uh, at the time, it, it didn't have anything. So, um, but outside of that, it looks like the PRs are actually doing pretty well. There's lots of discussion and, and communication. I didn't see anything that needed any any direct things. So, if there's any any PRs that people are working on that they'd really like some additional eyes on, or, or feel that there needs to be some discussion about. I'm definitely happy to uh, get that added in here and then we can, can talk about it a bit more. Um, I'll circle back and, and double check this in a minute. Um, all right, that sounds like I hear someone talking. If, if there's any discussion point, I'm happy to pause for a minute. Yeah, okay. All right, um, in the bug scrub, there definitely are some uh, different points that have been brought up. Um, Looks like there were a couple for, that Andrew put on here. I think he's away right now, but we'll go ahead and get those pulled up real quick. Um, first one is about SSH documentation for the main repo. Um, and it looks actually like this was merged already. So let me just see content of this. I think actually this might already be done. So I don't know if there's any, uh, is anyone aware of the particulars about the documentation for SSH here and, and what uh, it looks like it was just moved into the user guide. Um, is there any, any discussion that needs to happen on this that you guys are aware of? Okay, maybe that was just the point that the SSH documentation has been moved to the Qbert user guide. Uh, maybe that was what that was. So I can I can circle back and ask some more about that. Um, and then return directly when key function executes fails. So let me go and pull this guy open. Okay, uh, return directly when key execution failed. Okay. Test. So looks like it's undergoing test right now, but it looks like this is more of a PR, so I don't know why it's underneath the bug scrub, but um, I'll ask him about that one too. Um, so this looks like it's more of a PR and I, I'm actually gonna move this up to the PR section, but it looks like this could potentially use some review. So if uh, people have some some time to look at that, um, that would be beneficial. Looks like Andrew may have said that he was uh, able to look at that. But again, if anyone has some, some free cycles to just give some reviews on this and some eyes, um, I think that uh, this is it's probably a good good area to to uh, to look into that some more. Yeah, um, this is Jed. This one was all assigned to me, uh, so I will um, look into it. I I've looked at it before. I was confused about it and just closed the window instead of uh, asking for more information. Uh, so I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you for that. All right. Um, outside of those ones, it does look like there were a couple um, of issues here um, that could use some additional insight and help on. Let me go ahead and get this one first up. So this one in particular was about Open API and Kubevert, um, and they're saying that they're having issues getting Open API up uh, from Kubevert. Um, so they're saying execute the command make. Uh, Gen, uh, Generage, uh, which will then create an error saying failed to build Swagger. 
uh, add, add one type for kubevert, make generage, and then it will create some error saying that there's an issue in the open API gen true. Um, has anyone run into this issue before? Um, is anyone familiar with this happening in the past or might have some ideas on what's happening uh, with this? Probably he should uh, had the annotation uh, on the new structure that uh, he introduced. That is uh, Kubernetes Open API uh, Gen uh, equal true. But I'm not pretty sure. But I need to confirm this. Okay. Um, so it just sounds like there's an annotation missing on the object that they added. Yeah. Additional um, uh, Right. Okay, perfect. Uh, hopefully that will make some sense and they will be able to get that added in there. Okay. All right, so that's that guy. Um, how to adjust resolution under DVNC. This one seems like a fairly straightforward one. I just haven't done it in a while. Um, in this particular issue, someone was asking if there's a way to adjust the resolution under VNC. Uh, for what's being set. Um, tried to use QXL and VGA, but uh, neither of them were able to uh, set that properly. Um, QXL doesn't seem to be supported. So is there anywhere in the documentation where uh, people are um, familiar with how to set up the VGA resolution settings? I think the uh, silence you're being met with, I can't recall if you can set them. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm doing some, uh, doing some research to see if it's even possible as well. I, I'm not familiar with this even coming up as an option, but without, you know, obviously going in and, and hard changing the value and recompiling it. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is possible. Um, it's kind of my understanding as well. Uh, does anyone have any other uh, information on that? Otherwise I might just uh, mention, I'm not sure. Yeah, 
And it looks like he was actually able to change that to the value, but still can't change resolution. So I don't know if it's since this isn't VR, I'm not the wrong thing. Um, what I'll do though is I'll go and, and try to do some research on this. Um, Um, yeah, so I'll I'll take that one uh, and and uh, go with that. Okay, and then the next one was about creating a full clone. Um, so the particular user said there are times when I don't want to create a link clone for a mirror. Uh, how can I create a full clone? Um, is this a possibility? I don't even understand what he, what does he mean with a link clone and a full clone? I, I don't either, actually. <laughs> That's why I was hoping somebody else might be able to make, make some sense of it. Um, I mean, does he want to clone a VM or what, what exactly does he want, right? So I guess this is just a, I just, I, I think we should just ask for more information on what exactly he wants to do. My my guess is uh, he's wanting to create a um, a clone of the VM, and the issue is is that from, like for the most part, the underlying behavior of Libber is to create a um, like a snapshot based off of a base image. Um, I know that in QMU it's it's very easy to create kind of a standalone one, but I'm not sure of, of how it works in Kubevert. So um, definitely, some more information would be be required here and i think that at least uh i i if i remember correctly someone at least is working on the on the full cloning um uh, on the full cloning feature but if i remember correctly it's not completely realized but yeah that might just be my bad memory i don't know <laughs> i'm not helpful i keep my mouth shut so oh, it's 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 you know it's it's my opinion as well. Again, I'm I'm very new to the community, so I'm not entirely certain. So I'm just kind of relying on those who are here to kind of chime in. Um, but my understanding is that it, again it is is less of a a thing. It, most most instances, people want the thin link copy, which is basically just a diff of of the existing one. It's kind of a Merkle tree approach. But um, that's a good question. I will. Uh, Again, I'll do some more research on that one as well to see if there is. But my guess is, like you said, uh, I, I'm not sure what in particular they're looking to clone. Maybe I will leap off the uh, feature point on there um, and just so see. Please ask uh, what they mean sure. with mirror. I don't know. If I'm, uh, yeah. I, uh, yeah, I'm also very confused by mirror. It's a good question. So I'll, I'll uh, ask those questions and hopefully the follow-up information will make some more sense. Um, one one point probably that I would like to, can, can you probably triage this with needs information so that we know next time that we have, yeah. And it's, I think um, there, there should be a dash, yes. Like that? Yeah, that should be okay. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Um, excellent. Uh, next one is there is currently an issue with VMI crashing with a kernel 518 plus. So it looks like they mm -hmm. want to deploy a VMI with the data volume and it crashed with a log of vert launcher. And let's see here. Unexpected exit status one dev mem no such file or directory for dev mem that seems kind of odd. Um, 
what you expect to happen to have no error. Not sure about the root cause. There are three versions of the kernel running in this Kubernetes worker node. Uh, the host works a VMI works well with the host running 418, but crashes when the host is kernel 519 or 51812. Um, so he thinks it could be potentially a kernel version issue. Um, and he did post his YAML on here as well as um, his OS release information. Um, he is running on a um, CentOS Linux 7. Um, that's a good question. It's kind of interesting that DevMem is not present. Let's see if this has come up as an issue. Um, the first two errors actually should be ignored. They, it's just because things are not ready yet. Um, so there's really no information about the crash. I suspect that it's uh, caused by the safe path uh, code that was introduced somewhat recently. Um, it does things that don't play well with some kernel versions. Uh, I can comment with that. Yeah, yeah. If you would, wouldn't mind commenting about that, that would probably be helpful for the user. And I, I would say that it'd probably be beneficial to actually see if it is a kernel issue, uh, any of the kernel <laughs> jump information that they have about that. And I actually might do the, um, would you mind um, having any information you have? Um, yeah, I think that, um, And then if you could comment uh, about the about that uh, issue you're talking about, I think that would be beneficial for them. Um, but yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, but yeah, like you mentioned, there isn't really a whole lot of information about the kernel about why they think it might be the kernel. So that'd be good. Um, and then last but not least, we've got the this backup failure. Um, so the Valero backup failed with vert launcher pod. VM's volume couldn't restore from this backup. So their comment is, can VMs be backed up with Valero? I'm using Valero and a RESTIC repository to backup, but partially failed with vert launcher pod. After restoring from this backup, the VM VVs were empty, but with the environment, I can backup and restore the pods with volumes. Um, and so they uh, talk a bit more about what they did here, um, some of the backup log information, and then the restore log. Okay, this is Bartos here. We already discussed this on our storage daily. Shelly uh -huh. is going to look into this, if okay. this is issue on kubevirt or maybe in the kubevirt Velero plugin. Gotcha. And I, I see that comment here again. Yes. I, I missed that earlier. <laughs> so Because it was just as the meeting started. Gotcha. Perfect. All right. Well, never mind. Looks like that's uh, been addressed. Okay. Well, that's fantastic. Is there anything else? And I haven't, I haven't been keeping an eye on the chat. Is there anything in the chat um, that has been asked? No, I don't think there's anything there. All right, great. Well, is there any other discussion points or any questions, concerns, thoughts, feelings? All right. Well, I really appreciate everyone who uh, attended today and, and all of the participation and um, uh, you guys being very uh, patient with me and my, uh, my newness, but uh, you know, again, really excited about what's happening in this community and things are going well. Um, uh, yeah, and look forward to seeing you guys all next week. And I believe that everyone will be back from KubeCon. So um, I believe the regular hosts will be attending. But uh, yeah, thank you all again for attending. And 
Uh, don't hesitate to reach out or ask questions on the mailing list if, if you guys need, or even in the, the Slack channel if you need some additional help. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, bye. Thank Thanks, you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Bye. See ya.